Those of you that watched the first video on this bait tank, which was probably quite a while back, a year or two ago maybe, um, know that this tank, the, my thoughts in building it and design, all everything going into it was for some serious pay pond fishing, cat fishing. Uh, everybody was trying to make sure they had the liveliest bait as possible. So uh, that's where that idea for this tank came from quite a while back. And we've made several improvements to it, or I've made several improvements to it on suggestions of uh, people that I've built them for. And so now I've got a, uh, a couple of new ones over here that um, are, that I had built for a uh, friend and family member. And so we got two new ones and kind of where we've came in the last couple of years. Uh, but the, everything else is the same as far as why we built the tanks. This one's going on a... Uh, catfish boat um, wants to have the ability to keep other fish and separate some types of bait and uh, it's got a live well on his boat so he straps this to the front of the center console and uh, works out pretty good so uh, the other one over there is for another guy that wanted one so we built one for him he's doing uh, he does some uh, not on a boat but he uses his for his truck and does some uh, pay pond fishing, cat fishing, and uh, straps this thing to the back of his truck, and it works great. So, truck, boat, whatever you want to put it on, this is the ticket. Uh, so, what we changed from the first time, we've now we've got, uh, we had to go with. We realized some of the um, hardware was having corrosion issues and rusting, uh, so we had to go to all stainless steel, everything that uh, wouldn't corrode and, and rust up, and. Uh, cost a little extra money to do that to go with the stainless steel but if you're going to build this tank i promise you this is my sixth seventh one and uh we seem to improve something on them every time but got to go with the stainless steel or your tank's going to look like crap so we'll go over the outside of it real quick and i'll do the best i can to answer questions better this time than i did a couple of years ago on the other one so any questions you got just let me know um so going over the outside of the tank, again, we just got three quarter inch plywood on the top, some nice smooth, I don't know why the lid looks a little different tone there, but it's actually not, it's something in the video. Um, the three quarter inch, just pine, uh, good grade pine, uh, several coats of stain, then any kind of waterproof you want to put on it, um, polyurethane, exterior polyurethane, waterproof, and whatever you put on it, just put several coats on the top, and the bottom of the tank so make sure you get the bottom and the top done really good they're exposed to a lot of moisture all the hardware like I said stainless steel the handle the hinges uh, the hinges are stainless steel on the side we had a hard time finding stainless steel that bent that went around the the barrel correctly so we just went with some uh, marine marine grade boat cleats um, which you know not really used for handles on the side of the tank but they work perfect so uh, you can kind of do whatever you want there uh, and the barrel is just a uh, just any kind of 50 gallon barrel that uh, we get these from a mechanic that gets like washer fluid in them so they're 50 gallons quite a bit higher so you basically just cut the barrel in half cut the barrel in half and as you can see from where my knees at it's not very tall, about uh, two or three foot tall. So, uh, going on to the rest of the top of the tank, these are just boxes that hold your electrical. Uh, this box holds electrical wires. It basically just keeps it waterproof. These boxes are, make sure they're waterproof. You don't want any electrical problems uh, when you put these boxes on. Uh, this box basically has the feeder wire coming through that's going to feed and power the tank and so that goes into this box because I had some questions on electrical it's really simple uh, doesn't take any kind of electrician to do this so uh, basically the feeder wire which is here comes into the the box here what's also coming in this box is the pump that we'll get to in a little bit that's down in the filter box so uh, that wire from the pump basically comes in this box. The feeder wire comes in the box. And then basically there's just a wire that jumps from here around to here to this box, which is your light switch. Um, so that's basically the wiring is very simple. 
feeder wire goes in that box, another wire goes to this box to feed your switch and your light, and then your um, your positive and negative wire for the pump that's in the filter will come into this same box. Uh, on the outside, we have this is a bag that's going to have your connections. So the bag worked out pretty nice. Uh, it basically just folds up like that. You can lift it up, and it's got a zipper on it. So um, basically, what that bag is holding was this wire. <clears throat> which is, now I got this other tank set up with water in it so we can see it work here in just a minute. Um, but basically what's in that bag is you got a uh, just a basic wire here that with two alligator clips on it to go on the battery. And that wire comes up and just make sure you figure out your male and female connections there and make sure you get that right. Uh, the wire coming from the tank is the male connection. So outside of that wire what also is nice is so you don't run your battery if you've got a two hour drive to wherever you're going to fish you don't want to run your battery obviously because you're going to run it dead so this wire is just basically about a six foot long wire has the uh, four prong connection on it like most trucks are going to have uh, for trailer lighting so you got a male and female in there so when you put this baby on the truck and strap it down, uh, you just hook that wire from the tank to your hitch where your trailer would hook up. And you basically just run the tank off of your vehicle while it's running. Okay. So uh, down here is just a simple little plug. You want this thing to be something you can take in and out with your hand. Um, <clears throat> so... You know, make sure you get some uh, thread tape on there uh, so it doesn't leak. And you don't have to have a pair of pliers. Um, outside of that, so basically we'll take a look at this, which is the filter box. It's just a white piece of uh, PVC sewer line. You don't want to get the expensive Schedule 40 kind. You don't need that. It just, has, it just needs to be the cheap kind you see in the irrigation part of Lowe's or something where you would do uh, something with this for irrigation so uh, that PVC pipe is the filter box and it basically runs to the bottom of the tank it's just got a cap on the bottom and this is also something nice to have make sure on your bulkhead when you put your drain in uh, you get one of these little strainers the strainer basically keeps fish from if you use small fish little creek chubs or whatever they can get sucked up through that hole and uh, stop it up <clears throat> so that little filter works out nice so back to the filter box and we'll get back to that in just a second the PVC pipe just comes up this is just a uh, uh, just a coupling with a female thread in it so looking down in the filter box and by the way, the filter box, this basically houses your, you fill this thing up a little bit with some carbon rocks. And that really, really helps with the ammonia, uh, keeps the fish, the bait fish, way more healthier. So make sure you got a little bag tied to there and put you some carbon rocks in there because that will hang down into the filter. So as it filters the tanks, it will run through those carbon rocks. Okay, so in the bottom, let me grab this out. You basically just have a, uh, a coarse filter, catches all your big stuff, and a fine, uh, fine filter like a polishing pad filter. You probably won't find these like this. Basically, this is just a this was a square stock filter from uh, like you get at PetSmart, and then I just cut them to shape, cut them to the four inch round, so they would fit in here snug. I don't know if you can see this real good. Let me try to put a light on it. Okay. That's better. Okay, so you basically see the slots I cut out in the filter to let the water come down. Uh, those are just two-inch bolts that I ran through the pipe. It basically holds a little wire mesh there that holds the filters over top of the pump. And that in the bottom is just a basic rule 500 gallon per hour pump that's all it takes 
you get that sucker for $22 on Amazon. So that's what it looks like on the inside. And then you put your fine filter in first, obviously, and then your coarse filter goes on top. Uh, so it'll course through your uh, any big items first. So let's move that stuff out of the way real quick. Maybe a long video. I appreciate you sticking with me. Uh, there's a lot of good things about this tank. And if you get to where you build yourself one, you'll absolutely love it. So on this side, basically this is just a eye hook with a carabiner. And it just holds your, uh, your little net to net out your bait fish. And that thing is just a perfect size. It works perfect. It's 17 inches long. So, um, so let's take a look at the inside. We talked about all the outside. The inside, make sure you invest in a good marine grade light. Worst thing that can happen, catfishing in the dark. You don't want to, this thing has a great light on it. You don't want to lose your light. So, because you didn't do outdoor, waterproof, you name it, just make sure it's made to basically strap on the outside of a boat somewhere and you'll be fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so basically you can see the lights there. It's just mounted up through the lid. And that's why that little bolt, you can hide that bolt if you want or putty it or whatever. So looking at the plumbing, that rule 500 gallon per hour pumps in the bottom there. Uh, and as you can see, it's just got a cap on it. So basically, it's just pumping it through some three-quarter inch um, poly tubing. I get the black because uh, it just looks better. And make sure on the clamps you use, those clamps are uh, plastic clamps. So you don't want to use like a regular clamp you would put on your radiator of your car in here because they rust like in the first time they get wet. So make sure you spend the extra money and buy the stuff that should this tank should be built out of and you won't have any problems. We're going into about four years of messing with this thing, so we've got it pretty nailed down. That strap just basically holds the filter pipe, uh, the filter housing tight. I basically just took a little Dremel tool and dremeled out the uh, slits for the filter. You can do these as small or as wide as you want. Uh, the, this tank here is basically going to hold a bunch of brim, so we're not really worried about the fish getting in those slits. And if they do, you can just reach down and get them out. So, uh, it's just a piece of three-quarter inch poly tubing. You just got to get it 90 and get it coming up. This is a cutoff valve for your spray bar. We'll get to that. You see how this thing connects, and you got a spray bar that goes all around the tank. So, Anytime you want to turn the spray bar off, when you particularly when you're getting bait out of it, so you can see better, uh, you basically just grab this three-quarter inch ball valve, turn it off, and your spray bar stop, and the water calms down, and you can, excuse me, see your fish better. So go from the three-quarter inch ball valve, basically just go to a poly tubing again to get up to your ninety. Um, you just got to get this ninety. So you can start your spray bar that goes around the tank. So that's basically just a three-quarter inch coupling. Uh, it's got a female threaded in one side. The other side is a slip. And if you can see it there, there's basically the slip bushing. The slip bushing right here goes into the PVC pipe. It's a slip side one side. The other side has a female thread. And then you just get this adapter, and this adapter will get you down to the size of what size spray bar you want to do. This spray bar is a uh, 3 8 inch, so pressure works out really good on it. So basically you just go from that plumbing to your spray bar, and this spray bar just goes all the way around the tank. And once you get to the end, and the spray the spray bar is just attached up with some uh, just some little nylon half inch nylon clamps. So once you get to the end, this is important. You want to have this stopper on here, and it's left long and loose for a reason. Because if the spray bar gets stopped up, you can basically pull this thing up out of the tank, take that plug out. Once the plug's out, anything that's in that all that tubing. You can just flush it out, uh, flush it out of the plug. 
So leave that loose enough where you'll want to maintenance that or if you get any problems. Uh, if you keep, if you take good care of it and keep the filters clean, this, this tube in here for the spray bar stays really clean. It's got small holes in it, but, uh, you basically can just take a little small screwdriver for the little holes where the spray bar works gets plugged up. You can take a little screwdriver and pop them out. All right. So that's pretty much the inside of the tank. Um, pretty clean, pretty nice looking, no wires showing and, uh, so it works out good. Okay, so I uh, got one over here that's already hooked up. I got some water in it. This was the other one. I basically built both of these at the same time. So they are completely identical. So let me hit the light switch right here. Um, it's nice to see uh, the light on the bait tank. That was a... Uh, Another important thing, we wanted to make sure we had good light when we were out there catfishing. So, all right, I'm just hooking the positive up to the battery to turn it on. So, basically, right now we just got you know, you're just stirring up the water, you're circling and cycling the water through um, from the distance and the area it takes. Let's turn the light on real quick. It is a really good light. Um, so basically you see that it's pumping uh, from the bottom of the filter box, pumping through the plumbing that we looked at, and pumping up. And basically just pumping around that spray bar. There you see all these beauty tiny holes in the spray bar. You can adjust pressure from there. Actually, it's got more pressure there. Sometimes the pump if you hook it up twice. There you go. Um, so that's what you want. Cycling the water. Uh, the water's collecting oxygen uh, from the spray bar to the surface of the water. It's collecting oxygen, throwing the oxygen in the water for you. Uh, you're filtering all the water nice and clean. You got your carbon rock bag that's hanging in there. So all this water that's uh, sifting down through the filter and into the pump has already basically been ran over the carbon rocks and it just works out good once you want to see all those bubbles on the surface of your water uh, your water gains its, the most oxygen off of the surface so all those thousands and thousands of bubbles probably per minute make a big difference so all right, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know, and i uh, try to get back to you. Uh, this tank, we've actually have kept fish alive in this tank uh, two or three days before the tournament. So this thing will keep them alive for days. It's basically, it's basically pretty much identical to what you would see in a bait store. It's just a small model that you can throw on the back of your truck, strap it to the front of your boat, however you want to do it. So... Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think.